Hi, this is Andrew Tsai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about this device here, which is the Canon Starwriter Pro 5000, which is a word processor from 1994. So firstly, I should tell the story about how I got a hold of this particular device and the reasons that I'm making a video about it today. So the story is a little bit sad. So I have a client who um, is an elderly gentleman and um, very sadly, his adult son had died. And um, the the son had been writing um, lots of uh, data on to these floppy disks. And uh, these included things like poetry and scripts and, um, and information that they didn't have uh, backups or copies of in any other format except for this Starwriter Pro 5000 and the floppy disks that they were using. So what my client did was send the stack of these disks off to a company that would uh, pull the data from these disks and put them onto a USB flash drive. And this particular company did the job exactly as described. However, none of these files could be read by any program that would run on any modern operating system. And as far as I can tell, there's no particular conversion system which is successful in copying all the data over. Any kind of data that's pulled over results in these garbled lines, which presumably contain things like headers and formatting, which are proprietary to the Starwriter Pro system. So what I'm going to show you now is one of the folders which represents one of the floppy disks, which was copied over by the file conversion company. And as you can see, the entire disk is filled with these files, which end in the file extension dot zero zero zero. This dot doc file is a copy that I made in order to open up in Word. So what I've done here is I've renamed the dot zero 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 extension to a dot doc and I've opened it here. And as you can see, it's filled with all this kind of garbage information at the top. And it's just hundreds and hundreds of pages, which doesn't really represent what was originally in the file. Now, if I open with an alternative word processor, like OpenOffice, it's the same kind of situation. Um, it's all this uh, missing character information. Uh, there is some text which we can um, occasionally see, uh, some plain text, but majority of it is just this kind of heading and code information, which is not really relevant to what we want to read. Now, if I open the file in Notepad, you can see that the there is uh, a bit more clear information, but then we have actual text here, and you can actually see um, actual data that we can recover. So I did spend some time looking on the internet for a conversion program, and what I found was this program called WinConv, which is supposed to convert older Word and text files into more modern word processor or text files. And um, this does support some forms of Star Writer, but not the particular form that we need. So we, I did try to use the Canon Star Writer to uh, for DLL formats. And unfortunately, it was not really successful in making it work. We had the same kind of problems uh, as before with lots of garbage data. And um, I did end up emailing the creator of the application. And unfortunately, he did not have a solution to, the, to this problem. And this conversion program wouldn't work in this particular situation. So another potential solution which might have worked to get the data off this computer would have been to just print the actual files themselves directly. And that's something my client really tried to do. So they did open up the print heads, they did clean them all, they put new ink cartridges in, but nothing was working. And you know this is not unexpected given how old this printer is. So after exhausting all of the online conversion options, um, the only real solution that I could really think of would be to go back to the machine, insert the original disk files, open them within the Starwriter word processor, and then export them again as um, either plain text files or word processor files that could be read on more um, modern word processing applications on the computer and then converted to Word again. So what we needed to do was bring this back to my office and then start this conversion process. 
Now to do the file conversion for this disk, all I'm gonna do is pop in this floppy drive in here, and then I'm gonna to go to the computer and press Alt F to get to the file menu and then open the file that we need. It's all um, keyboard driven, so it's a little bit antiquated, but if you've ever used Windows 3.1, then you will be very familiar with these kinds of things. So I'm going to open the first text file in the list, and then what I'm going to do is just check that it's all correct. And then I'm going to export it. So as you can see here, we've got some data, and what I'd like to do is format that to a different format. So I'm going to go to the file menu again, and then I'm going to export the document. And um, what I'm going to do is choose a WordPerfect for Windows 5.1. And what I'm going to do is call it the same name so we know where we are. Two. And then I'm going to call it WP for WordPerfect. And then I'm going to press Enter to export that file. So once you finish exporting, you just take out the floppy disk and what we're going to do is insert it into one of our modern computers using one of these USB to floppy disk drive external disks. And I'm going to pop this in and pop this into my Windows 10 computer. So I've inserted the USB floppy disk drive into my Windows 10 computer and you can see now that these two files are on the disk drive. So I've got the original .000 file and I've got this WP file which I exported on the star writer and what I'm going to do is use OpenOffice to open that file. Okay great so I've got a properly formatted document and to get this to work on a Word computer what I'm going to do is file and then export or well, file and save as a Word file and uh, this should be readable on most computers so if I put this down as FBD2 doc and I click yes so if I go to this file on my desktop which I just created and I open it using Word I get the actual formatted file all there all correct, all with the page numberings in the correct place, with the chapter numbers there, and the indentations are there. Everything looks very nice and good to me. So now that we've figured out how to convert StarWriter Pro 5000 files to modern Word document files, I now have to go through each individual file on each individual disk and export them individually and then convert them back on the computer. It's quite a long process, but I think that this is the only way to do it whilst preserving all of the formatting. And it is a bit of a slog, but I think we'll be able to manage through it. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. The Star Writer itself is a little bit before my time, um, I think the first operating system that I was using was Windows 3.1 and I was using some kind of word-based word processor on that operating system. But I do remember seeing a lot of these around at the time and it, it's interesting to see such a relic being used in 2020. What I'm going to do now is um, show some information that came with the machine itself the manual, the guides, and an invoice as well. So this is the Starwriter Pro 5000 itself. As you can see, this one's aged quite a lot, and um, it still has a lot of the kind of stains and even this kind of demo sticker still attached to the device. And it looks like it's been kind of flecked with paint a little bit, and it's seen a lot of use. So. These word presses are really interesting because they were an all-in-one personal publishing machine. So you could type your documents here and this kind of built-in bubble jet printer could just go ahead and print that document straight away. The computer itself uses this screen 
which is a 14 inch CRT. And um, you, you might see some yellow banding on the screen, but that's just because the refresh rate and the refresh rate of my camera is not the, not, don't quite match up. Um, in real life, it's just a kind of a 14 color gray screen, which looks pretty normal and relatively high quality um, compared to some TN panels that replaced it, these kinds of computers in the 2000s. So it's rather extraordinary seeing the invoice for this particular machine. So uh, it, back in 1995, this particular setup cost £528.73, which is remarkable given what, you, what kind of electronics you can buy for £528 these days. That'll buy you a very good laptop, Windows laptop, or a, a cheap second-hand MacBook, which is capable of so much more. But back in 1995, this was a very robust word processing tool. Um, here's some of the leaflets that came with it, advertising its um, exciting publishing features. We have this uh, old Canon guarantee, which I really doubt is still in active use. We have this end user licensing agreement. We have an accessory disc which contains clip art, which my client never even opened, which is quite interesting. Here is a notice to customers. So this looks like a, a kind of informational leaflet added into the pack. And it's a kind of warning about how editing your file may affect the, I guess, the line height and how it would appear when printing, which is interesting. This must have been a problem for some customers in the beginning. Then we have this rather large tutorial book with this uh, little star mascot, Canon mascot, and uh, you've got all of these information teaching you how to use the machine properly. Surprised Canon hasn't used this in any other of their products. And then you have this rather chunky user guide, which is very, very big and thick. And uh, it explains every single aspect of the uh, word processor. 